Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today's video is going to focus on making some steps that are perfect for any type of terrain where it deals with ruins or a church. Basically, old, worn, and moss-grown is the type of the look that you want to think of with this one. Any questions, please ask below. I'm really excited to share these techniques with you. Uh, you can also reach out to me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. If you are new here, thank you so much for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe. If you aren't new but you haven't hit the bell yet, make sure you do ring that little sucker so you get some notifications as to when I'm doing something new. Anyways, I am always happy to have you here. Take a look and I'll see you later. Bye. The key component that I used in making these steps was actually an embosser that I found from the company called Doris, and it has a brick pattern on it. Now this is something you will be able to find in your scrapbook zone of any crafting place. Now in terms of how big your steps are going to be or how high you want them to be is completely up to you. But the first thing you want to keep in mind is that you're going to have your base step and that is your full length and width. Every time you move up a level, you're going to reduce it by an extra inch. So as you can see in that first thing, I have four to three to two to one as an example. The next point is to keep your overall length to really no more than about five and a half, maybe to six inches. And most of this is due to the last point is that you want to keep your measurements within the footprint of the embosser itself to get the best detail result. For the first stage, once you've established the size of your base for the steps, you're going to make sure that gets glued onto some cardboard. Here I've used some cereal box cardboard. Once the glue is dry, you can just trim it away and that way you'll end up with a secure base that has a nice firm bottom to it to keep it from curling up on you. Do make sure though to cut away from your body when you are trimming this piece out. Now it comes the time to start using this Doris tool that I found in the scrapbook section. As you can see, it has two different sides to it. One side has the portion where it will actually indent into it so you have the groove look of cobblestones. The other side has a more frosted look to it and that's the side I'm going to be using in this case because I actually want the mortar to be raised for appearance sake because that's where the moss is going to go. What you need to do is warm up your foam with a hair dryer. I found it helps to keep the hair dryer on there but not too close. Check it a little bit every so often as you go along just to be sure you're not overheating things. Once it is warm to the touch, then you can take the piece of foam, put it inside the Doris embosser and firmly press around every last little bit of area that you have to make sure that it takes on the imprint from the embosser. And as you can see, the mortar is raised up while the stones are more indented. Should you use the other side, you'd have the reversed raised stones, lowered mortar. Obviously, you want to make sure to do the same technique to the rest of your step pieces. The next thing you're going to do is take a metal file for nails and you're going to bevel the edges on one of the length edges to give it a bull nose rounded look to your step. This also helps give it the more worn aged look as well. When it comes time to putting the steps together, it's pretty basic. Start with your base, take the next largest piece and put that on top and then continue on up depending on how many levels you have to your steps here. And I did use my low temp hot glue gun in this matter because I didn't want that foam to melt with a higher temperature glue gun. It also helps to line the steps up against each other at the back portion of the steps, making sure that both corners meet and then just holding it while the hot glue takes and cools down a little bit to make sure nothing shifts around on you. The one thing you don't want to do is press too firmly, otherwise you're going to mar the pattern of the bricks because of the pressure from your hands. To hide the back portion of the steps and where you have the different layers going on since that's a more unfinished look, what I did is put on a back panel of the Dollar Tree foam. In this case, you just want a nice long strip of foam that's about an inch high and you're going to put some more of that same low temp hot glue gun to work and you're going to place that on the back of the steps and you want to make sure that you line it up with the top of the steps so that you have a nice smooth finished edit at the top as opposed to working from the bottom up. It's a lot easier to trim away working the exact knife underneath the stairs as opposed to the stop of the stairs. When you have everything in place and the glue has cooled, then you can trim away any excess so that everything lines up and meets with the original frame of the stairs themselves.
To create your side panels, you're first going to need the length measurement from the back of the stairs to the front, and then what you're going to do is make a little notch where it's at the half inch mark for the overall height of the strip of foam. Then place your ruler on top and from the opposite corner, line it up with that notch, and then just make that diagonal cut with your X-Acto knife, again cutting away from the body. This is something you want to make sure you do twice over. When both sides are ready, you go back to the Doris and you're going to place that on top of the side piece that's already laying flat on a surface and you'll press into it to get the pattern imprinted into the foam. Make sure you flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. In this case, you can't sandwich it because you want to make sure that both sides have the same type of pattern going on. To glue the side pieces on, you're first going to put the low temp hot glue gun to work on the steps themselves. That's where you want the glue to go. You don't want them on the side panel pieces. Then line everything up, press gently against each other. Make sure you wiggle it around a little bit to have everything lining up where it needs to. Hold gently again because you don't want to mar that pattern. And then make sure you do the same thing to the other side so that your steps are finished off both front, back, side, and top. And then I'm going to show you a couple more things to keep going with the detail on this. Because I didn't want to get too much texture going on where the mortar is, what I ended up doing to put texture into the brick part is using the bottom of one of my paint brushes and just going over each brick section and doing a quick little circular or wiggle motion to add some markings to the bricks and give them a more stone-like look to them. And this is something that you definitely want to wait to do until they're put together so you're not doing spaces that aren't going to be visibly seen once assembled. So just go through with your paintbrush and again use the bottom of it to add that textural detail to the bricks themselves, making sure to avoid the mortar. Because we tend to work more without a grid, I didn't make my steps with grid lines in them. However, for those who do like grids, I wanted to make sure there is a nod to the grid itself. So what you're going to do on that back panel is measure out the markings where you can visibly see the stairs and that way it's going to come out so you can see where your inch spacing happens. So you know you have four inches across, well there are your four inch markings right there at the top. And then you can also add in some stone cracks and textures as well to the back panel. Paint with a mix as mentioned here. Make sure you cover everything and allow it to dry completely before moving on to the next step, which is painting the steps themselves. At the bottom of the picture, you can see the way the steps look painted with a mixture as mentioned before. And at the top are the four different color paints I use to give the stone look to the steps once painted. All painting was done with my cosmetic sponge technique that I like to use. And first you start with the graphite color sponging onto the steps. Then you're going to move on to the pewter. After the pewter is dried a little bit, you move on to butter, and finally you'll move on to parchment. You don't have to be completely dry between each step, but it does help to give it a little bit of a resting point between the colors so you don't muddy the colors together. When everything is totally dry, then you do a black wash to bring out more details. Once the black wash is completely dry, you're going to move on to adding the moss detail onto the mortar part of the steps. These are the three colors of paint I used for this effect. You're going to first want to be sure that you have a chisel tip or a wedge tipped paint brush on hand so that its narrow design will help fit in a little bit better where these mortar pieces are. First you're going to start with the olive green and taking your brush you're going to highlight those bits that are raised above the stone. And I like to get a nice coverage here with the olive green because it brings out the depth of it a little bit more. Once that's dry, and yes, you do want to make sure you're dry, you're going to move on to the foliage one of the green colors, and you're going to go back over again. This time, you don't need to be as thorough with the covering because it's more of an accent color this go around. Finally, the last color you're going to move on to is the suede, and again, similar thing. Now, if for some reason you realize you want a little bit more green here and there, you can go back in and re-add in the green colors once you're done with the suede. But I find that the suede just gives it more of that mortar-covered moss look as opposed to other options. So that's how I got the moss effect going on the steps. Keep in mind though, when going back in with the other colors, you will keep it more to a dry brush type of technique as opposed to a full painting of the mortared raised areas. 
Here are pictures of the end results, and it's definitely something I would recommend doing in terms of getting this embosser to help you out with your crafting projects. Would I use this for large pieces of terrain? No, I wouldn't, but for smaller bits like stairs like this or bits of wall, it definitely helps shave off a lot of time instead of going back in and doing everything by hand. So if you're strapped for time and you need to do something like this, I can't recommend this enough. So thank you very much for watching this. I do appreciate your stopping by and taking a look. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to sharing something with you soon. One more thing before I forget, and I know it's normally something I probably would have put in my intro, but I just remembered it. Um, if you're looking to get a Proxen wire cutter and would like a chance to win one, you need to get over to Dungeons and Glue Sticks. He's holding a really amazing contest right now where you are going to need to build a cottage. If you know his channel, you'll know why he's doing this. However, wanted to give you the heads up here on my channel because he's a fantastic YouTuber, really great talent, and um, anything to help him out as well would be awesome. So get on over there. I'm going to have something one of these sides. I'll put a link up so you can get over to his channel as well. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, yes, there will be bloopers after this part. So thank you. Stick around if, if you need more to laugh about. I know I do. <laughs> Bye. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for coming back. Ooh, the Texan was coming out. At the crafting news, jot, 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 jot. No. Things out. Don't. No, 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 no. Just say no. No, 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 no. I'll be a I'm just not meant to get through this today. What the? But Jesus. Not. I do swear. Okay, that's one thing. I do swear, but I'm trying not to get anything, you know, here on the YouTube. So. Probably because the day started with the uh, one of the kids basically spilling half a gallon of milk in the family room. Even better, it's carpeted. That's another story. <laughs> Typical. The printer's going. That's what the weird sound is behind me. I'm waiting for the woo. -woo. It's like, <laughs> no, I think we're good. Printer's busy.